Thank you for staying with us. We're still joined by Bola Dale Adikoya. He's a political scientist. He is in the studio with me. Um, I mean, so let's just um, get this conversation again going just before we left up. Um, Samson was talking about, you know, youth inclusion and saying that, okay, the kid, the young people um, might have some bad eggs, but at the same time, there is a larger percentage, you know, that are exceptional and will do the job, you know, as they should be. But do you agree with that? Yeah, of course. I, I quite agree. Um, I, 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 I do not subscribe to the notion that uh, every young Nigerian is... Is a, is, is a corrupt person in waiting. Um, so, and that should be the basis why they should not be given leadership position in the country. I find it very fallacious. Uh, to a large extent, I, feel, I believe that if you draw a list of individuals in this country who has mortgaged the, the, the affairs of this country, it's majorly people in the older generation. However, I think we should stop this argument of age disparities of, as, a, as a prerequisite for leadership or for, 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 to, uh, to, uh, for political office. What I feel most important when it comes to the issue of the presidential position is that the president is more of a, is more of an administrative head of the com, uh, of the country. country. He is not the one that takes uh, charge of the operation of the country. It is the political appointees, the ministers, the uh, permanent secretaries, the special advisors, and the head of agencies as well. Now, if you appoint young individuals into these ministries, into these agencies, these are people who will drive the economy, who will drive the process of the country. So, what I'm subscribing to, what I've what what, what I've been advocating for is that let us ensure that. No matter the age of the person we are, we are going to elect right. as the president, most importantly, such individual must, as a matter of principle, as a matter of uh, the integrity and, uh, and the prosperity of this country, appoint young Nigerians into these agencies with young minds, fresh ideas. Well, so that, that's the only way we can move forward. Uh, let's hope that will happen if that's if a young person is not appointed. But also joining us um, I, in, at the moment um, is Leo Kikio, who joins us from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, Ileo, a lot of water has gone under the bridge since um, the program started. But let me just uh, come to you now. Let's first of all look at the claims. I mean, some people are saying, um, uh, Baladale inclusive, that the president should not be running for office again. Do you agree with that assertion? Well, uh, sadly, I wasn't in the way Bola Dale spoke. I don't know his reason for saying that uh, someone who is constantly permitted to seek uh, re election. You know, shouldn't uh, seek so seek uh, seek so under under this present circumstance. Since they came into power, you know, things have really changed. For the first time in the history of this nation, we are hearing, we are seeing billions of dollars being recovered from looters who wanted to balkanize our country. Uh, like I said on Twitter some few days ago, there are three categories of people uh, who are presently criticizing President Muhammad Buhari. First of all, there are those uh, whose feeding bottle has been taken away from them. Uh, two, there are people who feel that they, they work for this government and they should uh, get something in return and they haven't been patronized yet. Uh, and thirdly, there are those who actually uh, like this country sincerely from the depth of, our, for the, of, of their heart. And I can tell you, the third set of people, I can count them on, on, on the tip of my fingers. Before now, over 30 local governments were in the ends of terrorists, Boko Haram. You know, in Borno State and Yube. You know, but today, not even a local government, not even a square meter, you know, is in the hands of, uh, of Boko Haram terrorists. Look at our response. Look at President Mohamed Bouhari's response when the book, Boko Haram terrorists kidnapped the Dutch school girls. Sadly, one of them is still in captivity. But you can see that there is a huge difference between the government of President Mohamed Bouhari, the government of APC, and the government of Good Luck, Jonathan, PDP, and of course, the 16 years they, 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 they used to take Nigeria about 50, uh, for 50 years. So let me just come back to you now. Um, um, Ileo was talking about you know, quite a number of people who are criticizing the president or who are saying that the president shouldn't run again. He says it's either one people who, well, you heard him. Let me not even um, repeat for the time, for sake time, for time's sake, let me not repeat all that he said. But do you agree with him that that's the reason why people are... are... I, I, I think the problem with people who are supporting President Mamadou Buhari and the, the apologies, the APC apologies, is that they think the whole issue around the whole second term uh, or, or the 2019 is based on uh, uh, issue of corruption or not. We, this, we have a we have a burning issue in Nigeria, which is security. People are dying in Benin. People are dying in Taraba. And you're telling me that people are criticizing this, this president is because they are, they are, the the bottle has been taken away. What about people that have lost love, loved ones in, in, in these areas? So you don't consider them as, okay, let's, as, as, as you say, they're inconsequential. 
So, so it's, it's, it's preposterous as they now based on the argument of anti-corruption. Even the so-called anti-corruption, we've seen, we've seen the challenge that has taken place also. The SGF is there. We've seen a lot of individuals also in the that have been alleged, uh, allegedly that have been uh, uh, alleged to have uh, committed atrocities. And not that we know about, about that. So you are coming up and telling me that uh, the president has, has performed well, the security has performed. People are dying. They are, they are talking about security. Uh, corruption in the same administration, alleged corruption in the same administration, is still, is still ongoing. And you, are, you are still telling me that the president is, is performing well and corruption. The fact remains that the president has done absolutely nothing. All his campaign promises from seven, you base it on to two campaign promises. Even the two now, he has performed woefully, uh, woeful in, in, those, in those two aspects. So to me, I see no basis why President Mohamed Bari should be, uh, should, personally in my own opinion, I see no basis why he should be elected. So sad that uh, 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 killings are happening here and there in, in few states in, in, the, in the middle of it. But the truth is, there's no way in the, in the world where terrorists have been T terrorism has, has been totally standard every year, every every now and then. We are shootings uh, in the U.S. Over 30, over sixteen thousand people have been killed in the first of, in, the, in the first quarter in the in U.S. from gun violence. And look at Paris. Look at Germany. There was there was still a, a terrorist attack in, in London recently, where a former spy of, of Russia, you know, was uh, was attacked using some some yeah, biological weapon. And so these things are, are things that you cannot actually a, a, avoid. And so I understand the fact that they are happening, but the truth is President Mondo Bori has risen to the challenge. He has, he has sent several, several military and security experts to that region to find a lasting solution to it. And day in, day out, you keep hearing that people are arrested, guns were withdrawn back. He's doing his best as, as regards to that. And we can be rest assured, 2019, there is no candidate whatsoever, of, of, especially of those who have been parading themselves. That was a contest. That won't become Nigeria president. That would be able to flow President Mohamed Bari at the polls. Okay, so we're talking about, you know, the age of who can be described as a young person. I mean, where do we draw the line? Because um, I think there's a, there's a national youth policy, which has, I think, is it about 40 or so? And there's an African youth policy as, as well. But let's just look at it now in general terms. Where do we draw the, draw the line, you know, to even say that, okay, so-so and so person running for office, young person, is maybe at a particular age. Where, where do we draw the line? I, I think um, the, the point is you've got the national youth policy that says the age, for, um, the youth um, age is between 18 to 35. And that's what we currently hold on to um, in Nigeria as 18 to 35. But the fundamental question and the argument is about uh, mainstreaming inclusion within the democratic process. And I agree that the basis of um, political representation or political leadership should not necessarily be age, but there are other factors that um, should be considered. And I think as being part of the Not Too Young to Run movement, we've been very, very clear that um, beyond age, you need capacity. We need leaders who are able to provide excellent public leadership. And so it isn't just about age. Um, but then if you look at the democracy argument that if someone is 18 and is eligible to vote, um, that person should also be eligible to vote for. Thank you for coming on the program. It's, it's a, a pleasure. pleasure. Of course. But we also have, uh, have to thank um, Samson um, Itodo, who joined us from London, as well as Ileo Okikyo, who joined us from Lagos, Nigeria. But that's where we wrap it up. On the this segment, of course, of the program, we'll take a break and we'll be back with the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Please stay with us. The tour made by President Mohamed Buhari at the Eco Atlantic City, where he also met and posed for photographs with international model Naomi Campbell, begins this week's five most viewed videos in fifth place. The Nigerian police will thereby call on Senator Dim Nominaye on whose uh, warrant of arrest had been issued and he had been declared wanted and equally listed on uh, red alert of the Interpol. Uh, it is followed in fourth place by the video of the police asking Senator Dim Nominaye to give himself up. The Nigerian police force is at liberty uh, to ensure that nobody is above the law, nobody is a secret cow, except those who have immunity as recognized by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So the Senator Dino Milai, in his own interest, should uh, make himself available in court on the 10th of May 2018. The line graph of Nigeria's per capita GDP shows where those dreams and ambitions can lead. With the exception of the recent recession, the slope goes up 
As a result of this growth, Nigeria is now the biggest economy on the continent. You're rapidly approaching middle income status like Brazil, China, and Mexico. But growth is not inevitable. Nigeria has unmatched economic potential. World's richest man's bashing of Nigeria's economic growth plan and lamentation of the country's low income status despite growth claims comes in taking the third spot. Nigeria will thrive when every Nigerian is able to thrive. If you invest in their health, education and opportunities, the human capital that we're talking about today, then that will lay the foundation for sustained prosperity. Second place is taken by the beautiful wedding of the daughter of Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju. While the most viewed video is that of the scene of a robbery attack in Ofa Kwara State, where scores were killed while many were injured. Well, there you go. Those were the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. However, now that the president has decided, other Nigerians have also showed interest in running for the highest office in the country. As it is said, the more, the merrier. But with options on the table, it will now boil down to the electorates to decide who will captain this ship. And that is a wrap on the program. Thank you for watching. And do remember, the conversation continues via the social media addresses showing on your screen. Bye for now. I'm Victor Mathias.